Hello and welcome back. Today in this video we are going to have a look at two Eventide plugins, Black Hole and Microbit. Those plugins have been around for quite some time, but what's new is that they are now available in an immersive version and Black Hole will lead you from this to that and Micropitch can get you from this to that. But before we start, a quick disclaimer. Some people at Eventide did suggest me to make this video and they have been kind enough to provide me with a permanent license for both plugins, but I'm not getting paid either than that and of course they don't get to see this video before it's released so it's my quite honest opinion about them. Honest however doesn't mean unbiased because I do love Eventide products. They've been in the studio way before I was in the studio and I found them in each and every studio that I came across. So, and I also do own the anthology bundle, which I bought with my own money when it was released. That was version 11 and I upgraded to the version 12. So all this to say that I do love Eventide products. And now we can have a look at the interface. Both plugins share quite a lot of elements. On the top you can find the presets and also the A, B, uh, which means you can compare two settings. Right below that you get on the left the input level and the dry wet control and on the right the output level. In between them the settings that are different uh, in each plugin and we'll get to that in a minute. Right below this long morph slider which allows you to transition more or less seamlessly, we'll get to that also, from settings 1 to settings 2. And right below that a 3-band EQ which will allow you to change the frequencies of either all outputs of the plugin or by groups front top and rear. On the left side of the EQ you get the modulation parameters which are slightly different from either plugins and also on the right side uh, a delay which acts differently on the black hole and the micro pitch. And finally at the bottom of both plugins you get the inputs and outputs management. So you basically the in and out is only showing you to which input or outputs the signal is present because um, both plugins are able to up mix the, uh, the signal. So you can range from stereo, simple stereo to a full multi-channel setup uh, up to 9.1.6. I think I said that already and uh, you can also adjust the output level of each output depending on your output configuration that can be also very handy. Okay so now we can see the specifics of Black Hole Immersive and First of all, I would say that Eventide brands it as a reverb plugin, but however, I wouldn't say that it's your kind of usual reverb in the sense that, in my opinion, it's not trying to recreate an existing space with its reverb time, early reflection, and so on and so forth. Uh, this plugin is to me more some kind of sound design uh, tool and it's especially great at huge spaces that are beyond what could exist in real life. That's why I showed you previously on the guitar but I also have it here on my snare drum and I tried uh, to make what is a rather a kind of uh, small program 
And so we can see the various parameters and gravity, the first one, which is the least obvious one, actually defines the shape of the, the space that is being simulated. So if I turn the mix full on and lock it so it, when you want to go through presets, you can uh, use that lock button and then your mix ratio, your dry wet ratio will not change. Uh, gravity, so it defines the shape, so it, it can be either very quite huge, but let's turn that back to zero. Or if you go backwards, it will start creating some kind of Of kind, some kind of reverse reverb. That can be quite nice, but still not quite as realistic. It can even at times tend to sound a bit, a bit springy or slingy. So gravity is basically the shape. The size is more obvious. As you can see, it can be negative and do some weird things. And normally, it will change the size, the size of the space. That can be very, very long. And there's one thing with the size which, uh, as you heard, quite change, adds some kind of modulation uh, when you're changing it while the sound is playing. Uh, that can be quite nice at some point. Uh, but, uh, of course, as soon as you change it, uh, as it, it's making the, this kind of weird thing, uh, if you want to use automation to change it, or if you're using the morph function, say you have one sitting here and your sitting two is here, and then you want to morph between the two, So you will still get that and I would have loved to have a way to not to have that because sometimes it can be great but sometimes it, it's maybe useful to change the size of the preset between say two different sections of the song and well if there is reverb at that point when you're changing it that will be heard so which is a bit annoying sometimes. So size defines the size and feedback will simply lengthen the tail of the reverb which means that those three parameters gravity which is the shape of the the space size which is the size of the space and feedback which is the length well that will extend the tail of the reverb, all those three parameters do have a, an impact on the um, what would be normally called the reverb time, the overall length of the sound. And if you want the sound to stay forever, hitting freeze will, well, freeze it. And when you release, it's gone. Uh, and next to the freeze, there's the skill wet button, which is really great when you use it with automation because you can have a rather large space and
and really kill it instantly uh, when you need to do it and that that's a real great thing a word also on those three tilt sliders which basically will change the weight of the 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 effect on the front and on the back and then again the size is more obvious but I don't know if through YouTube because what you're getting the audio you're hearing actually is the binaural output so I forgot to mention that before so that may be uh, the right time to grab a pair of headphones uh, and so you can uh, hear more accurately but um, it's of course much more obvious when you have speakers uh, than uh, in binaural or, uh, speakers well, when I mean when you have speakers is when you have uh, a full set of immersive uh, speakers. Uh, a word on the modulation, which will also change the sound, especially in conjunction with the braid. Say with the, the depth at 100%, it's, it's way less uh, like some metallic spring and the modulation will add instantly some kind of And finally, the delay. Now let's sync it to the session. You can either have it uh, no synchronization, so that's in milliseconds, or you can set it manually to a tempo which could be different from that of your session if you need to. And in which case, the two knobs here are in uh, beat notation. And let's use, let's sync it uh, to the uh, session and you can either have them link uh, which will make them move together and get the same value or unlink them and of course the pre really acts as a pre-delay let's uh, say uh, let's make it maybe one fourth would be or even shorter than that so that's really as a pre-delay and the loop will also act as a pre-delay but the loop in conjunction with the feedback the feedback will act as some sort of, of delay feedback for the loop here. So plenty of possibilities for this black hole immersive plugin. And now let's turn to the micro pitch immersive plugin. The micro pitching basically consists of detuning slightly 
the effect compared to the original sound and it's been around thanks to Eventide again as far back as 1974 when the famous H910 was released so basically you get a sound it's coming currently in from the LR front inputs so I can slightly detune the front compared to the right and as you can see for the moment the effect is only output to a front and not to the surround not to the rear and not to the top the reason is the feedback here and the crossfeed it's a kind of combination of both and the feedback will slowly trigger the fact that the plugin will upscale the mix. But even with a strong feedback, it still remains on the surround, which means that I can also detune the front and the back. And if I don't want to detune them at the same value, I can use the tilt to shift and offset the tuning only on the front, only on the rear. But I don't know if this will get through YouTube because what you're listening at the moment is the binaural output of the Dolby Atmos renderer. Um, so you can want to use headphones. I mean, the sound is here for example, so that's not uber important. But and if I want the plugin to upscale it to the top, that's where the crossfeed comes in. And so then again, I can. top is zero but the main is shifted well only the top gets shifted and as before I have my delay either in milliseconds or locked to the station or on manual which allows you to enter your own tempo which might be different from that of the station and uh, and use that and use uh, beat notations. Let's say I don't want to use a pre-delay, but only the delay itself. And add some modulation. Oh, uh, another great thing with the, the delay repeats is that they can either be assigned to the same input that the, the outputs or they can change either they can turn each repeat will be assigned to a different channel either anti-clockwise or clockwise which gives even more uh, width and depth uh, to the sound and you can add a tiny bit of modulation. Either randomly or with any shape you wish. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.